you redecorate it. Again. Yeah, that last round of decor took a lot of upkeep. We were kind of hoping it would attract more customers, but the sales numbers are pretty much the same. Just seemed like a lot of work for no obvious gain. We'll bring out the green screen only when the story absolutely requires it. Huh? Nicole, so glad you could make it. What did you call me here for? I called you to share in the spoils of war. What? You know those unicorns that snuck around the National Guard and tried to kill us and broke your wrist? Boss called dibs on their bodies for you. Well, for you, me, and JC, but of the three of us, you're the only witch and the only one who's probably gonna use them. I suspect you and your witch coven can come up with plenty of uses for unicorn blood, horns, pelt, hooves, etc. All of which has already been harvested for you. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of uses. Shouldn't you have called dibs for yourself? I slayed several other unicorns. Don't you worry about me. Oh my god, are you guys talking about those poor creatures that the National Guard just butchered outside of town last week? <laughs> yeah, poor creatures. Those things would have killed all of us. They were unicorns! Yes, and I've seen the devastation that they bring, especially to relatively isolated towns such as this. If a herd gets big enough, they can pick entire cities clean. Okay, but, but you're using animal bodies for your own gain. That's as bad as using a human's corpse! No, it's not. Humanity has been using animal products for thousands of years for both survival and comfort. And often the only way humans can cast spells or do witchcraft is by using magical ingredients. Unicorns are extremely potent, good for spells, charms, amulets, curses, protection. I can't believe that you're all so callous about animal cruelty. Were you out there on the battlefield? No, I was told to evacuate with everyone else. Well, Nicole, Cyrus, and I were there. We fought and killed those unicorns ourselves, swiftly and without unnecessary pain. That's about as good as you're going to get. Now, I don't mind vegans or vegetarians or animal rights activists following their beliefs, but you don't get to push them onto others. If you think using animal products and witchcraft is wrong, then don't become a witch. Well, you just lost yourself a customer. No, stop. However will we recuperate the loss? Cyrus, help us carry Nicole's goods to her car. Any idea what you're going to use it for? A few. If you're here for lunch, we open in an hour. If you're here for magic, I need to run and get some supplies. I was actually wondering if you needed magic. Oh! Hey! How are you doing? I'm fine. Broke my wrist. How close are you to breaking Bob's curse? Oh, uh, well, I've got three marks, so four more to go. I actually got one during the whole unicorn thing last week because everyone was ordered to stay in their homes, but of course that's not applicable to people who don't have homes, so we kept the food shelf open after hours. We all drank coffee and told just terrible jokes. I have no idea which one of their lives was permanently and undeniably changed for the better, but I'm not complaining. But it's slow going because I can only volunteer here. They don't have the budget to hire me as an employee, so I need to work full time elsewhere. And being a waiter doesn't give a whole lot of opportunities to drastically and undeniably improve someone's lives. I double checked. A spell made with a unicorn horn would mitigate the fairy curse, at least for a little while. You have a unicorn horn? I have six. Want a bit of luck to speed up your curse? Yes, please. What do you mean you don't have a boyfriend yet? You're almost 30. You should have one by now. I was already married by the time I was 25, pregnant with you at 27. Ma'am, what are we ordering? Banshee mocha, medium with a chocolate chip cookie. I know a career is important to you, but you have to settle down, find someone, have kids. What do you mean you don't want kids? Oh, Jesus, one of these. Too expensive? Really? That's your reasoning? That is incredible. Incredibly selfish. Well, I want grandchildren. Oh, Lord. And at some point, you're going to wake up and realize that your best years are behind you. You're never going to be prettier than you are now. And it's never going to be easier for you to have a kid than it is now. She hung up on me. Hmm. Imagine that. Your drinks are almost done. Use your card on the screen. 
I swear this generation has me so worried. My daughter especially. She's never going to be truly happy unless she gets married and has kids. That's true happiness. I disagree. What? A relationship does not make you happy. It simply enhances whatever state of mind and life you're currently in, both positive and negative. And quite frankly, romance is not for everyone. I am much happier single than I ever was in a relationship. Well, you just haven't found the right person yet. There could be an argument for that. But at the same time, if you need a romantic relationship to feel joy in your life, then you don't need romance. You need a therapist. Yeah, and speaking for the young millennial slash old Gen Zers, a lot of people my age don't want kids for a number of reasons, finances being only one of them. I mean, we can barely afford to take care of ourselves, and you want me to throw a tiny, helpless human at us? I work three jobs just to keep a roof over my head. Where am I supposed to find the time to actually raise this child? You just need to have a child for you to realize it's... It's a whole paradigm shift. Once your child is born, nothing else matters, and you wonder what your life could possibly be like without them. And that's good. The kid should be the focus of everything, which is why if I'm going to have one, and that's a very big if, I need to be absolutely fucking lutely certain that I can take care of them. And with shitty financials and some god-awful family trauma, that's not happening anytime soon. I only just now found a romantic partner that I genuinely gel with and can see myself with for a long time, and I don't even know if she wants kids. Climate change is also an issue. Like, no offense, if and when I have kids, and I do want some down the line, that's happening in the Fey realm, where the icebergs are staying in one place instead of melting and drowning everyone. Honestly, fair. There are also a romantic people whose ranks I may very well be a part of, I'm still figuring that out myself, who simply do not experience romantic attraction. And many of them, as well as many aloes, want nothing to do with such a relationship. They find happiness elsewhere, in friendships and families and communities and life. A spouse and child may have brought you fulfillment, but it is not one size fits all. <sighs> Spoken like a bunch of immature people who have never had children. Who's going to take care of you when you're old and infirm? Cyrus and I are fairies. We don't get old. And if you're only having a kid so you have a free nurse down the line, that is a selfish reason to have kids. Like, it is one of the top three reasons to have children, right up there with hang on to a family marriage and my parents want grandbabies. That's like the trifecta of shittiness. And I agree. I have adult children and grandbabies, and my husband and I are doing everything in our power to make sure they ain't burdened with us. We didn't have them for free nursing. We had them because... Well, honestly, the first one was a surprise, but the second one we wanted because we wanted more babies. But, but your life was so much better with them in it, right? Of course, my babies were the best thing to happen to me, but I did not feel true fulfillment in my life until much later, when I fell in love with crochet and I realized I wanted to open a yarn shop. Babies didn't do that. I did. Yeah, and what if that kid that's supposed to become a nurse dies young, or is disabled, or ends up moving to another country, or turns out to be a little sociopath? Isn't it safer for you to put all that money you would spend on a kid in a retirement fund or a really good nursing home? I mean, that's certainly better than saddling the squirt with the emotional burden of taking care of aging parents who only see them as a meal ticket rather than a separate human being with their own hopes and dreams. <sighs> You're all gonna die old and alone. I didn't even think I would live this long, and you're talking about little baby nurses. Dark. What's up? Welcome to Cafe Latte. Today's special is the Unicorn Mocha, a mocha with unicorn blood mixed in, with whipped cream and topped with sprinkles made from their horns that gives it a nice little crunch. I'll take that in a large. Cool. Ten dollars. Uh, don't you know who I am? One of Yarn Granny's grandbabies? Ew, who is Yarn Granny? She's a regular customer, owns the yarn shop down the street, hasn't shared her name because we're fairies and giving your name to us is usually considered a dumb thing to do, even among friends. Although at this point, I think she's just genuinely forgotten to actually introduce herself. You might have seen me on social media? Well, unless you're a book talker, bookstagrammer, or writer, no, I have not. Now, why would I do any of that when I look like this? Because reading and writing are more powerful magic than actual magic? Ho oh, ho! Excuse you? 
You heard me. I agree with him. I have literally bent reality in front of both of you. Cool story, boss, but you don't make me feel feelings like R.F. Kwong does. Are you the manager? I'm the owner. Great. I'm a social media influencer. I run a fashion platform with over 10,000 followers. You should give me my drink for free so I can promote you. That's not going to happen. One, because I don't need any advertising at the moment. Two, because you're a fashion brand, not a coffee, tea, or cafe brand, so your target audience is not mine. Three, because Cyrus's account over here has over 200,000 followers, so if I ever do need promotions, I can go to him. What? 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 Like it's hard? Good morning, nerds. Welcome to Lavender Books, your sci-fi fantasy book talk account that focuses on the queer. Let's break down some of my favorite reads of the month so far. As usual, I listen to all these on audio, usually while working out or doing dishes, but my boss slash legal guardian usually buys the physical copies for herself, which is what I use to show off here on Book Talk. I finally caved in with House the Dragon hype and listened to Fire and Blood, which the internet tells me will get a sequel soon, but since it's George R. R. Martin, I'd bet half my library that it will not. Now 9 out of 10 for story, 2 out of 10 for queer rep. You guys know I'm always at least a year behind on reading trends. I finally finished The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue. This one gets queer points for having a bi character and is just gorgeously written. It's also the only enemies to lovers story that I genuinely like because they immediately go right back to being enemies again. 8 out of 10 all around. I finally found more Ace Rep and Saw Kill Girls, an absolutely terrifying YA novel about three girls turned superhuman to fight this shape-shifting monster that eats people. So trigger warning for that, as well as some domestic violence themes and a surprising amount of spiciness for your young adult book. 7 out of 10, it's a great story, but I could not sleep at night because of this. I just bought and started reading Priory of the Orange Tree, no spoilers. So far it's good. Yellow Face by R.F. Kwong is next. Maybe this time I'll actually get ahead of a reading trend. And of course, C. Amalanji just came out with Citadel, which would have taken this month's trophy for most dead characters if I hadn't read Fire and Blood. But it has a much more hopeful ending than Martin's, and it might actually get a sequel. Unfortunately, while the main character is autistic, so it has some good minority rep there, all the queer rep is relegated to the background and side characters. So I give it an 8 out of 10 for story, 5 out of 10 for rainbow. Tell me what you've read this month in the comments. Bye! This account has over 200,000 followers. Uh huh. And no one was more surprised than me. Here's your drink, Pat. You sticking around? Nah, can't. I'm meeting up with Janine. For a knife fight? No, for dinner. What? Yeah, I know, it's weird, but we realized during the unicorn fight that we got off on the wrong foot, so we're starting over. You hate her. I did, but new leaf, fresh start. Maybe we'll upgrade that to a mere dislike of each other. I'll let you know how it goes. It's gonna end with them hate fucking. Ew! No! Why? I'm just saying, they had that energy. Why would you sleep with someone that you hate? Because the sex can be really good. Not good enough to wash out the shame and regret you feel in the morning, but you certainly never forget it. Or perhaps they'll actually get along? Guys, no, come on. Pat's smarter than that. Hey, sorry I'm late. Traffic sucked. Our new alliance has barely begun, and you're already tempting me with a dog chasing cars joke? Trust me when I say there is no joke you can come up with that us werewolves haven't already used a hundred times on each other. I never really minded your jokes. I just minded that you weren't original with them. Ah, I will endeavor to try harder next time. No offense to Janine, alright? She's a great fighter, a respectable leader, but she is so proud and haughty, and that's going to drive Pat up a wall. You are a combat veteran of a dozen battles, yet your only panic attack came when you ate a chocolate bar? I was a werewolf when I ate it, and then I turned human right after. Nobody had any idea of what that would do. Why did you even eat it in the first place? Cyrus stared me. And Pat, I love him to death, okay? Brother from another mother. But holy shit, he's such a frat boy. And I don't see someone of Janine's elegance and haughtiness accepting that. 
Wait, 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 hold on. You're a vegan? How? Coconut water. It's identical to human blood plasma. You're bullshitting me. I am not. It was discovered during the two world wars. Of course, I do occasionally partake in donated human blood, but there is so little of that to go around. And quite frankly, the coconut water tastes better. So yeah, there's no way that this fresh star dinner is going to end in anything other than disaster. No shit, you've read all of token stuff, even the letters in the Silmarillion? When? When it came out. Nobody had ever read a story like that. It was incredible. You are such a nerd. So what is your favorite book? Uh, is it racist if I say Dracula? Not at all. It's one of my favorites, too. Really? If only to laugh at all the things Stoker got wrong. Oh my god, like watching a bad military or werewolf movie? You strike me as the type to take a shot every time there's an egregious mistake. That was the perfect way to spend Saturday night with friends. Yeah, no. 20 bucks says it's at least a one-night stand. It's not even a date! Mmm. My only issue with the lunar core is many of you look very similar when you're in werewolf form. You all should wear collars. I'd like to see you wear a collar. Hi, welcome to Cafe Latte. We just opened, so it'll take us a minute to- You! Me? Oh my god, dude. Really? Yes, asshole. We are dating now. Don't you say a fucking word. You get, like, a two-week grace period, and then I am saying so many. That's fair. I guess JC did tell me so. What are you doing here? I was rather hoping for some tea while Patrick gets his coffee. Now? Here? Are you fucking kidding me? JC, what is your problem? Uh, my problem is that you're a vampire. Hey. Hmm. And the sun is going to be out in like 15 minutes. Uh, Cyrus, maybe we can find like a tarp or something for the windows. Or, or better yet, we can like wrap her up in the tarp and then drive her home. Dude, let's go. This is serious. She's going to be ash in like 20 minutes. Jennifer Charles, was it? Vampires do not burst into flames in sunlight. What? It's a myth. We get sunburns more easily than humans do, and we are largely nocturnal, much like bats, wolves, and other night creatures that also do not spontaneously combust in sunlight. That'd be a rather poor evolutionary trait. Appreciate you looking after us, though. Cyrus, when you make Patrick's coffee, can you also make one for me? Because I obviously really need the caffeine. Yeah, sure, I gotcha. <laughs> and a medium raspberry tea with unicorn blood, please. So how was your guys' date?